Hello everyone. In this talk, I share an in-person conversation with Bess on the topic of healing and the needle chart. The audio wasn't perfect, but I think you'll find many nuggets and gems of wisdom in this conversation. Bess and I, along with 13 other presenters from around the world, will be teaching at the upcoming Evolutionary Astrology Conference that begins next week, October 3rd through 6th. You can use the coupon code BESS10 to get 10% off of your enrollment. Check it out in the description below, and I hope you enjoy this insightful conversation. Will you just briefly introduce yourself and what your topic for this con conference is? Sure. I am Bess Trzlecki. I, I should say Strzelecki, because that's the proper way to pronounce it, I hear. Um, my married name. Uh, I am an astrologer of a few years. I'm rooted in shamanism over the last decade. I am an energetic practitioner as well. And I would say my into astrology was really through health. Um, I had a grandmother who introduced it to me when I was younger, but I didn't really fully come into the field until an illness pushed me in that direction. And that has sort of sparked the, you know, the impetus for this talk. And you've also done a lot of work with, we were talking about this ahead of time. And one of the points of trepidation around having this conversation is while you do have a lot of medical knowledge, anatomy, physiology, a lot of herbs, and astrological correlations as well, we're hesitant to begin to speak about it. Tell us why. Yeah, I think it can lead you down a path of diagnosing. Apologize, our dogs are in the background. Um, it can lead you down a path, path of diagnosing, and also it can become a very fear-based place when people look at their chart and they know there's a possibility to understand the medical implications or the health implications of that it can make you feel like oh my gosh i have saturn in this house and this means that i'm predisposed and i'm gonna get you know xyz disease and it's that's not what it's meant to do i think in its highest form i think there is a, a great opportunity for awareness but i and and support and there's you know there's fun things you can learn from your chart like okay, you know, I have a son in Gemini, and so what does that mean? How can I support my life force? How can I support my evolution? Whatever. Um, but I don't want it to become a fear-based right. practice. Right. <clears throat> That's probably a part of not why I haven't gone in that direction, but I'm so mindful of how broad and, and deep the whole scope of healing is, right? I have an immense amount of respect and curiosity around just the whole realm of medical diagnosis. But this is where maybe we can start our discussion. We were kind of tuning on into this earlier. And I guess the question is, what is healing? Yeah. Right? Because we can, we can look at the needle chart and interpret it on all kinds of levels. And I think that the gem of evolutionary astrology is that it's committed to a soul dimension of perception. Yeah. So we're never going to just interpret the chart and give diagnosis, like, okay, um, even on a psychological level, oh yeah, these are your hobbies, or these are your traits, or these are your good, you know, everything has to be pointed back to what is it as a soul that you're here to learn and, and evolve and work with. And so I feel very mindful when it comes to medical diagnosis, that we don't just stop on the superficial level of, okay, this corresponds to your kidneys or, you know, I would want to come back into what's the evolutionary intention. And that shouldn't also be used in such a way where we don't then honor and respect like the value of like specific diagnostic work. I think it has to be done with such care and thoughtfulness to not accidentally become a little bit over materialistic or fear based like you were saying. Completely. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And I think there are ways to look at the chart, right? And the healing is on physical, mental, emotional, spiritual levels. And there are ways to find that in the chart, right? Yeah. Like you can always bring it back to the soul with Pluto and the nodes and karmic evolution and all of that. Um, but then also you can, you know, anytime there is an illness or a, you know, an injury, a significant injury, you can always stop and start to do the Pluto thing, the Scorpio thing and say, why? Right. Right? What is what's going on in the life? How's the physical setup? What's you know? What are you eating? <laughs> what are your sleep patterns? What are what, like? Are you taking care of your physical body? Are there mental and emotional patterns that need to be adjusted? Are there you know? Is there trauma 
in um, whether that's like present life or past life that needs to be uncovered, recovered, reprogrammed. I think these, and that's a good astrologer, I think, can go there. And I think evolutionary astrologers have an inclination to go there, which is nice. I really feel that, you know, EA is valuable in a deep way in the sense that it's bringing this like, deeper psychological dimension. And yet there's so much more to develop. And this is one example. We need more people that are deeply steeped in the medical diagnostic realm, orienting towards an evolutionary perspective. I mean, I can see that also with, you know, even mundane astrology, every um, orientation of astrology can also be brought to this more evolutionary soul perspective. So we all have stories of both being sick, being unwell and healing. And what makes it a good story is where these experiences weren't just, uh, yeah, I had a paper cut and I put a bandaid on it, but where the sickness or the disease itself was a part of a greater evolutionary process that maybe we couldn't apprehend in the beginning. And this isn't to say that every single time there is an issue, we have to go towards like, what's the meaning? Because we have to also honor and respect that we are having this experience. And sometimes we just know what we know we have to tend to what we need to tend to and give a band-aid you know um i want to share a couple stories and maybe you have some as well from your own journey and this is again it's like i can go on the more diagnostic level which i'm curious about but what i'm about to share was an experience of sickness that was undoubtedly um about my own evolution so there's a time where i was at a Taoist temple in china and I was just going to be there for a month and maybe like just short of a month within the first week. And I was learning some of the practices, which was like really what I was there for. Within the first week, I got very sick. Mm -hmm. I had a dream that night where I was told whenever, and I'm going to speak about this, actually, this teaching that I received during my upcoming talk. My talk is going to be on Venus and tending to the inner garden of the soul, which is partly inspired by this thing that I received. Whenever you care for the beloved on the inside, she will always show up by your side. And I woke up from that and I was both like, wow, that's so beautiful. Like a very pure non-dual, like whenever you care for the beloved on the inside, she will always feel like life is always going to meet me on the outside as an extension of the inside of the inner care. And that is a very Taurus second house statement. It's like so Taurus, right? tending to the beloved on the end. Like so, and I have Venus in the second house, okay? I also have Pluto in the second house. So I woke up inspired, but also I felt like crap. Um, I woke up feeling very sick and I was sick for like the majority of my time there. It was only like the last five days that I was well enough and the Shifu gave me permission mm. to practice Qigong. So my entire time pretty much at the temple, which was like, a, you know, took a lot to go there was just being deeply sick. And while I couldn't quite, and I still can't ever do justice to the, the larger reality of that sickness, what happened during that time was I was just deeply alone. You know, I was without all internet connection, social media, not working, not generating purpose, right? Didn't know anyone there. And it's, it wasn't a social experience and I couldn't even practice. I was just a lot of time by myself and needing to anchor in a deeper place of self-love and self-respect. Mm -hmm. And the transit was transiting Jupiter on my natal Pluto. So again, I have Pluto in the second house. Venus is nearby. So there's a lot in that Venus Pluto intending to uh, inner self-value right? Self-value, self-esteem being a big part of my journey and really just learning how to be with myself in a deeper way. So Jupiter, which is, think about this, like the planet of expansion and growth, right? More often than not, I've seen this so many times, Jupiter transits can bring disease, can bring death, can bring illness, all those kinds of things. You know, and the chief who worked with me, he thought I had malaria. I didn't have malaria. <laughs> but he, it was like a mystery. What's going on with Ari? Like they did all this healing work on me and it was like a really, it was kind of a mystery, and I've had to play it out for a while. I I love your story. I also, I mean, my one of my first thoughts is I wonder if you will uncover a lifetime where you were there, 
and had a certain amount of power or were teaching mm -hmm. a certain amount of people or something, right? And had to go through this experience. I actually do have a little bit of knowledge yeah. of that. Yeah, so there you I, go. I can say, I mean, think about it relative to that Pluto second house. There was a time in the past, I'm just aware, where the the inner cultivation was more about personal power and it was misused, um, which is like something that I'm like super mindful of and like guilt, like there's a lot of conscientiousness right. around that right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. I actually never yeah. thought about like literally yeah. that mountain. So yeah, that's exactly it. And so it would be almost like a karmic cleansing, right? Like you'd have mm. to go deep into the into the spiritual practice, practice, and it would be almost like a karmic re-imprinting for you to kind of rewrite and reheal that story. Mm. And so there's, and I would say that you know that heals a level of the soul's trauma, right? Mm. That you have over lifetimes that you accumulate. And so you did a cleansing there, essentially, and. And also, you know, there's a time to give it and a time to receive. And I'm sure it was probably a time in your life where you needed to be receiving healings from others and know that you're not alone. You're second house Pluto, right? That you can like, there are the people who can support you and help in the in that healing as well, right? And then you can use that to then go and help others from that experience. So I love I love that story. And, and I think that's like, that's what we'd be looking for in the charts. It's like, what's going on here and why and that's such a beautiful i never thought of that until just now it's such a beautiful insight yeah yeah, yeah. like an evolutionary necessity to bring me back to myself yes it's such a beautiful and yeah. that jupiter like expands the teaching of that right like um and then expands your ability as a teacher to then go and help others in having had that experience right. so yeah. um and sometimes like we don't see that until hindsight's 2020 and you're you're using it in ways that I'm sure you wouldn't even recognize, right? Um, so I, I love that story. And I do oh go ahead. Let me just say I mean that that comes back to that whole like these things are destined to happen and at the same time uh, my computer's sliding, that's why that's happening. <laughs> you can you move in closer this way? Come yeah. Computer sliding up. And at the same time, no no sickness, no disease, no pitfall itself has meaning on its own. Right. Like from a larger understanding, where you can really see like the truth, there's actually always a gift in it. Right. And that's again apprehending that sometimes takes just a lot of trust and patience. But that's I think where like the um, like the teaching of like the guru taking away comes in because when there's that level of insight and understanding, we don't suffer right. needlessly. Right. I would say too, though, you know, the, some of those are situational, right? The soul receiving a guru taking that away is would be necessary for that soul. It wouldn't necessarily be necessary for everyone, right? right? Like not everyone can go to a guru and have them take away their healing and it, or it their pain. It wouldn't be it wouldn't appropriate. Be appropriate. Yeah. And sometimes it wouldn't be possible because there's a reason the soul is going through the struggles and trials and tribulations on a health frame in order to help their evolutionary growth. I would my sus, I would suspect that that soul who had a guru take away their pain needed to know that it was possible, right. needed to have a little bit of faith, needed to understand that all things are possible yes. in, and there is yes. a biology to belief as well. Yes. And so it's a beautiful experience for both parties, but it's it wouldn't necessarily be right in all cases yeah. or possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think, and, and that, I love what you said. I mean, I really, my favorite mantra with astrology and especially with health is nothing happens to you, it happens for you. Mm -hmm. And especially with Pluto and the soul's evolution, it's like we can always be thinking about whatever, you know, whatever hardships we're going through are almost always for our soul's growth, right? Yeah. And that's inclusive of health crises as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know you're going to be sharing during the talk this like pivotal that actually got you into astrology. Yeah, even more mundanely. Like. Yeah, I have a mundane one. Um, well, there was a karmic implication as well, but I was, um, you know, I I grew up riding horses, training horses, selling horses. I wanted to be a professional horseback rider. I took a year off after high school to see if I wanted to go pro, and oh. then um, at my last Saturn square. I broke my leg falling off a horse. And it was like one of those freak things. I like, you know, we were jumping big five foot jumps and he was young and kind of rambunctious and he was a tall horse. He was like 17 hands. And I emergency dismounted, landed on my feet, but rolled an ankle and broke a leg. Wow. And it was um, between my, it was over the summer where I was supposed to, <laughs> this puppy is so naughty. Um, it was over the summer where I was, the, you know, I'd made the decision I wasn't going to go to college and then I had been 
you know, sort of pushed in that direction. I went, but I, I couldn't do anything on a broken leg. And it, I had to, ha I had to stop and ask the question, like, why, why is this happening? And really it was because I wasn't, I was on a path that I was not meant to go down. I wasn't meant to go become a professional horseback rider. I couldn't really handle the stress of trying to win in competitions and putting that kind of pressure on myself. Was the Saturn, last Saturn square. So your Saturn's in the 11th? My, in my Saturn's in the 12th. So your Saturn was transiting in your ninth? So it was, yes. And, and it was like reaching the exact square. And, you know, that, those Saturn, that first square, the opposition, the last square and the return mm -hmm. are all where we're imprinting mm -hmm. our karma from, you know, past life karmas. And I did mm -hmm. run into a past life where I had broken the exact same leg. Um, and it was a lot around not taking on my personal power and accept and making my own decisions, mm -hmm. right? I felt a lot of guilt, Saturn, for the, you know, money and resources and time and effort my parents <laughs> had sacrificed, my horses had tried for me, all the things. And I think I, I wasn't willing to really step back and go, I'm going to let this go. Mm -hmm. And it's not in my highest good to go down this path. It's been a beautiful part of my life, but I am not going to make this my whole life. It wasn't the right path for me. So I think I, I think I'm, and you know, Saturn's like bones and structures and right, all right, the right. things, right? So I think I had a, I started to have a predisposition to learning that when, when a health crisis comes up, you can say, stop. So that's a great example of, in this case, it's a very Saturn health dynamic of like limit, boundary. You, you broke your leg, you cannot pass go. You cannot <laughs> collect your right. knowledge. Yeah. The nature of this was an actual experience on a physical level being blocked, limited. You can't go forward and you have Saturn and Scorpio. So there's just this greater psychological dimension, like where you mentioned, am I not embracing my power? And this pattern of maybe suppressing something that I'm afraid of and walking mm -hmm. this path that I don't need to walk. Mm -hmm. So Saturn was transiting your ninth house at that time, right? Which was horse riding, yeah. but also just, you know, maybe not connected to your own intuition exactly. and redirecting. So I have uh, Jupiter on my IC in Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. I went to an Orthodox Jewish high school. And at the end of my time in high school, I was getting ready to go to Israel to study in yeshiva. And it was a very um, religious yeshiva. You know, like an all boys school where you study Torah all, like all day, and it's just, and I had a lot of questions about God and religion and spirituality, and I was beginning to be more vocal about that with my rabbis, and I wanted to go to Israel mm -hmm. to decisively figure it all out, and I had this vision of just like being there, uh, forming relationships with my rabbi with my teachers, and just studying Torah really deeply and asking all the questions. Anyway. The issue was at that time I so I got sick with mono uh, because along with all those religious questions and confusions yes, I was yes. actually having a secret life out right and that was a part of my guilt and my confusion of like I got to go to Israel get myself clean get me you know be in a good <laughs> pure environment and it was like these Sagittarius efforts to like try to make myself something that I wasn't yeah that's a sad issue. I got mono and I could not go to Israel. Mm -hmm. I was so tired. I was mm -hmm. so sick. So I stayed at home in New Jersey. Then I ended up going to Yeshiva University, which is an Orthodox, it's like a Jewish university. You lived in New York City, right? Yeah. So it's a secular school, but with Judaic studies. And that was just the right, it was like, I couldn't have been anywhere else that would have been because I needed to be immersed in that Jewish context. It would have been too much of a stray. Yeah for me to kind of let all of that conditioning go. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it provided a very secular environment you know, yeah. with non-Jewish teachers and non-Jewish philosopher that I took a class with and lots and lots and lots of books. Mm -hmm. So during that time, once I got sick, I started school. I spent the first semester just reading so much. I studied the Torah, but like with a more analytical mind. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do what I thought I would do, which is you know, adopt to some other belief system that I was trying to convince myself of. I'm like, I'm here, got all these books, got all these different people with different beliefs. I'm in New York City. I went so deeply. It's like Pluto on my Jupiter. I unearthed all of these old belief structures. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to find the truth. I yeah. need to know, is the Torah true? And who am I supposed to be as a Jew? I just went so deep that by the end of the first semester, 
I had a profound crisis because I wasn't able to convince or prove anything to myself. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. Like, what am I going to do with my life? Like, that was a sort of like, now what? You know, so that's another good example of, you know, from the point of view of getting mono, sure, we can rest and take good care of yourself. But looking back at that, there was absolutely nothing I could have done other than not go to Israel. Yeah. That was yeah. like divine grace coming in yeah. and saying like, you're being guided on the path and the intelligence is greater than our, our, our own understanding. Mm -hmm. So we just have to trust, trust these things it. sometimes. Trust Even if we don't know, if it, it felt like a right. setback. Right. I was so disappointed. I was so disheartened. And it's cool to like be a parent. And I wonder if you've experienced this or have seen this in direct ways, seeing our children go through different health dynamics and kind of have a little bit of insight into the greater evolutionary dynamics underneath that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I, you know, Jackson had a fall. Christian was holding him and he tripped and fell down the stairs and <laughs> we ended up in the hospital and um, he was two months old and it was, we got helicoptered to CHOP in Philadelphia and it was like really a nightmare. Um, it was hard at the time to sort of try and look at his, I mean, I was in the hospital looking at his transits and trying to figure it out, but because he was so young, like a lot of the larger planets hadn't moved, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're looking at some of the more micro ones. And this is the thing about, you know, there is a piece that if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. And it actually felt like it was a greater learning for me. And it was more reflective of some of my Saturn transits, again, like handing over power where you shouldn't. And I think that was a real test for me. And it helped me later with my, my larger illness because I knew something was wrong. Like they were telling me his CAT scans were fine. Like he, he hadn't, didn't, there was no brain damage. There was no body illnesses, but I could feel that he was not nursing like he was supposed to and the doctors were telling me well you know he has a headache now and so he's not going to be and i remember i you know i called the shaman in england and he was like there's we could read the runes and know there was something wrong with the water he wasn't getting enough fluids and i went to the doctors and nurses and said he's not getting enough fluids and they said well we have a you know a chart and he's getting his ratio weight and all the things and i'm like there's something wrong with the fluids and then you know i kept telling them something's wrong there's something about you know this really help me learn about my own intuition. Mm -hmm. When a mother knows, a mother knows, mm -hmm. like if something's not right. And I had some wonderful nurses who said like, I know to always listen to the mother because mm -hmm. they just know there might not be a medical explanation or we might not be able to see it, but a mother will know. And it came to find out that he wasn't getting my breast milk. And so he had botulism. We had had work oh. done on the property. They had dug up a lot of the soil and there's botulism in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, California, yeah. Hawaii, I think. So they have to like fly a medicine out from California to, you know, give to your children. And basically I, so he, it's kind of like Botox, but in your body basically. So your lungs eventually can't work on their own. They can't move. They can't suck. They can't swallow. Oh. And it was a really good lesson for me to basically get the doctor's attention and then they brought on a neuro team and they figured it out but it was like don't doubt don't doubt your intuition and don't hand over your power even to you know the professionals who are the best in the world and you know some of the best in the world right and they were wonderful but it was you can't you cannot ignore your intuition let me speak to this piece it's coming back to like, are certain things meant to happen? And it's like, there are certain things that are just going to happen. Yes. And like, there's this really like mysterious threshold of, and, and I can only speak to this from my own observations and my own experience and see if I can find the words for this. Coming into this world, obviously we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And we have the karmic patterns that we have and the, the tendencies that we're just not conscious of. And there are things that are just going to happen that are part of just like body that you're in. It's going to happen, just part right. of it. And that's where I think Jeff Green has spoken to this, where it's like with the Uranus, I forgot what the percentage was, but there's a certain percentage that he says, there are certain dynamics that are going to simply manifest. Mm -hmm. They're just going to happen. Mm -hmm. But then there is this other dimension where it's like the archetypal dynamics are there. And, and they don't necessarily have to mm -hmm. manifest in a yeah. physical way, but oftentimes it's like the imprinting yes. of patterns that have not been resolved. Mm -hmm. Once we become self-aware of the dynamics, 
there is this amazing pivot point where we actually get to change the trajectory. Mm -hmm. I think that's like where like the guru or the grace of the infinity can come in and appropriately yeah. change the direction of things. Right. If you're conscious, you can work with it and Con manifest yeah. something. So different. The Course yeah. in Miracles, one of the, the core teachings in the Course is a good learner will learn from other people's le le lessons. And so you don't have to recreate the crucifixion. Totally. And just the idea of like, if we understand where our curriculum is, like where our healing, where our forgiveness is, like where our real soul work is, we can begin to sort of see the energetics, the signs of it showing up in our life and actually take it into heal and to find the work that we're here to do. Not necessarily play out this pattern of, I need to right. recreate some kind of suffering for myself. Right. And it's a tricky thing because in a lot of spiritual circles, there's an immense amount of confusion around, you don't have to ever get, you know, all that. Yeah. And it's like, in theory, Yes, and I think that's a really powerful thing to appreciate. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, absolutely not. And it's like we can't just apply that idea to people. It could be incredibly misleading. It's spiritual confusing. bypassing. Yeah. 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 And it is dangerous, I agree. And so I think, again, to your point, like, go to the chart, find out what's happening, find out if it's karmic and sort of like is what it is, or find out where and how you can influence and how you can support physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Right. And I think what you said, like, everything's happening for me, such an essential perspective, because even if we don't understand the why, and just, you know, when we talk about why, like, why is never like, oh, this is happening because you did this, this, right. and that, and you're, like, the why is always going to be like, a deeper level a of process. intelligence. Yeah, a discovery. There's something unfolding that is actually for your benefit here. Totally. Um, you know, to actually appreciate, I may not understand it, but thus, if I don't understand it, I'm not going to hold on to my perceptions too strongly. Yeah. There's just so much beauty and power in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do find with the health things, like if you have a very strong <laughs> belief or you are rigid in one way of thinking, like you will be pushed to experience. Yeah, yeah other, absolutely. Right? Um, and learn to appreciate, like if you're a very uh, non medical and want to be perfectly organic and homeopathic and xyz like you'll be pushed into a hospital oh my God, like, <laughs> and if you are very like by the book you believe everything every doctor ever tells you you will be pushed into the more natural home. like yeah, yeah. you know you can't hold so that's like a sign of like the immense compassion of light because it's like actually teaching us that like there is no judgment yes. here like we're actually more deserving than we realize we don't realize that we're holding these like puritanical visions totally. but actually underneath that is actually becoming more receptive to love yeah Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a really beautiful way of putting it. I think the healthiest way to look at it, unless you are, right, deeply steeped in the medical and you are incredibly intuitive and you are a great diagnostician, like there are those people out there and that's great. Um, you know, for myself, I think it's a nice thing to work towards, but it's not where I would, I would plan myself right now. I think I much more enjoy supporting people through looking at the chart and determining well-being and how to get there. Um, and what may be causing on the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual mm -hmm. levels based on what I'm seeing and then sort of the timing of those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know for myself, right, we were talking about this a little bit, my Uranus has been opposing my Saturn. My Saturn is retrograde in the 12th, conjunct my south node in, in Scorpio. And I knew, you know, my some of my mentors and teachers were like, once that Uranus opposes your Saturn, it's going to, Saturn rules the boundaries of consciousness, as we know, and it's going to blow the gates a little bit mm -hmm. wide open and and it did with having the psychic stuff kick off having you know dead people show up lo departed loved ones show up in readings and take over like experiencing transmediumship all those things mm -hmm. and my container suffered right like my mm -hmm. body got sick i got tired it was i started inviting in all kinds of things that were not welcome and I had to, so, but knowing that was coming and knowing that I could bolster myself is when I could be really good on the self-care front. Like, what are you eating? Are you getting enough sleep? Like, are you, how are you managing your nervous system? Those are things that like, instead of being it from a fear-based place, it's very much a like, how can I support mm -hmm. myself or my client through this, whatever's going on in the transits in the chart. And I find that's a much more empowering place to be than a, oh no. I'm going to suffer X, Y, and Z right, right, right. right. I was remembering people ask me often, when is this going to end? Mm. Or, and, and this can be health or it could be relationship, or not, am I ever going to find this? Or am I ever going to feel better? Am I going to, right? Or am I supposed to endure this? Am I supposed to? 
and, and these are such precious questions because mm-hmm. when someone's asking a question like that, like, will I ever find the right kind of partner or will I ever heal this insomnia or whatever, you know, <clears throat> when that's emerging, mm-hmm. obviously the answer is never, it's never useful necessarily to be like, yes, this was when it, right? Nor do I know. But to actually like bring back this like, gem of self-reflection in the question itself is a sort of defeatism and fatalism. Like I'm vulnerable and susceptible to something that I can't control yeah. and it's hurting me, but will it end at some point? Mm-hmm. When will I have paid my karmic debt? Yeah. And it's like, if a person can actually become self-aware of that vibrational reality, they can then begin to yield themselves to something that they maybe never really did, which is what has this been teaching me? Mm-hmm. What has this health condition, how has it have been a gift? How has not having had these fulfilled desires been a gift for me? You know? Right. The moment we begin to respect our conditions yes. is the moment we can actually begin to receive insight and guidance. Yes. I like, you know, I like the idea that these transits and especially the, you know, the outer planets or whatever, the ones that people are most wary of, it's like you're inviting them in, like you invite them in, they show up, they like aspect something, they start to kick something on. And instead of like panicking, you open the door, you invite them in, you have a cup of tea, you sit down with them and you go, okay, what are we doing here? Like, what do I need to learn? What are you teaching me? What are the energies that are coming up? How can I work with this? And so you're right. Like, it's never going to be an astrologer's job to say like at X date, this all goes away, right? right? It's like, well, let's look at what this is doing and let's find out the why and let's find out how you can work with it. And if you do the work, then chances are that like you'll be moving in this direction and you will feel some release or you'll be inviting in something else at the, you know, at this time. Jeff Green, like the only determinant for evolution is desire. Mm -hmm. And I love that and respect that so deeply. That's like the only thing that we have control over the energy of desire and desire here in this context. When we speak, it's like, I desire the truth. I desire only what is real. And I'm not going to let all of my other fears get in the way. So I know we got to go. Yeah, I call Thank, you. Okay, then. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Thank you so much. So I'm um, putting the description EA conference. Also, if you want to get in touch with Beth and work with her as well. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. Wait, you should show them on me real quick. Look this where, where, where. has been hanging on the back. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, the whole time. <laughs> Snoring. <laughs>